what chains are going to be viable in this new world. And that will come down to, of course, censorship. And this question is Tornado Cash Fallout. Can Ethereum be censored? In the light of OFAC's Tornado Cash sanctions, Ethereum's community debates what to do if validators censor sanctioned addresses. With the sanctioning of Tornado Cash last week, the cryptoverse has been rife with speculation about how far protocols and companies will go to comply with government regulations. Underneath this debate, a key question is being tested. Can Ethereum be censored? And really, to me, this comes down is not just can Ethereum be censored, but are the developers willing to let Ethereum be censored? And when we looked at, of course, the contradictions uh, thread from Vitalik Buterin, it was clear that he does think that there is a certain amount of the nation state that uh, is needed and is, quote, smarter uh, than the people, meaning he doesn't necessarily think that the people should be making all the decisions. That is, you know, the head of the Ethereum project. And he does probably, to a certain extent, think that he should participate in allowing it to be censored and working with regulations uh, with different governments. Underneath this debate, a key question is being tested. Can Ethereum be censored? The answer isn't a simple yes or no, and it requires differentiating, differentiating Ethereum, the protocol, from the many apps and services built atop it. So we're talking about layer one censorship versus, I mean, everything that's being built on top of it, dApps and layer twos and... I mean, obviously, layer threes can be censored at this point. Services can be censored. Ethereum infrastructure providers like Infura and Alchemy have already restricted access to data on Tornado Cash smart contracts. Circle, the company that powers the USDC stablecoin, has begun denying service to accounts that have interacted with Tornado linked addresses. But it's not all doom and gloom. The Ethereum protocol, the technology dictating whether transactions get propagated out to the rest of the network, has thus far not been censored. If a U.S. citizen wants to shuffle money through Tornado Cash, miners will still add the transactions to the block and propagate them out to a wider network. This is where we get into an interesting position, right? Miners will add the transactions to the block and propagate them to out to the wider network. What happens when Ethereum moves to proof of stake and we end up in a position where the validation of the network is being run on large corporation data centers like AWS, Amazon, and so on. You increase the likelihood of censorship by moving from proof of work to proof of stake because as we've seen, these companies will basically participate in anything that is requested either or by the government or of course by their own ideological stance as we saw with parlor for example when they took that down off of aws so right now with the protocol being mining it's pretty much impossible for them to do this but once we move to proof of stake i think that it opens the door for censorship on ethereum but a series of Twitter think threads have pointed out this week, this doesn't mean the protocol is completely immune. Whatever your opinion on the tornado cash debacle, the fact that so many companies have jumped to comply with sanctions by the U.S. Treasury Department's Office of Foreign Asset Control should not be surprising. As Coindesk's Daniel Kuhn opinion earlier this week, it is perfectly reasonable and possibly preferable for Ethereum blockchain-based apps to block users with exposure to tornado cash. Following the sanction of the uh, Annette, and anonymizing who service last week uh, anonymizing there we can ah, we can do it the alternative would likely open large parts of the ethereum network to criminal liability and that would include founding teams who are building the nascent alternative economy of decentralized finance the founder of tornado cash has already been taken into federal custody for Ethereum app builders and exchanges to flaunt sanctions on principle, they risk jeopardizing everything they've built, been building towards. At scale, this could imperil the entire ecosystem. Industry think tank Coin Center has argued that the U.S. government's dictates surrounding tornado cash is overbroad. How can it be proper to add to the sanctions list not a person or a person's property, but instead an automated protocol not under anyone's control? 
As Coin Center indicated, one could theoretically just clone Tornado Cash's smart contracts, though this would still be extremely risky. But this broadness applies in other ways. In an act of protest and comedy, Ethereum users have been testing how far the sanctions extend by sending money to public figures via Tornado Cash. Because Jimmy Fallon, for example, has received a bit of Ethereum from Tornado addresses, he will presumably lose access to services that flag Tornado-linked wallets, all through no action on his part. For the pranksters, this proves that these sanctions were clumsily defined and therefore difficult to apply practically. But it is also demonstrates how interpreting these sanctions requires one to get a bit technical. And from my perspective, this does dictate how inevitable cryptocurrency is at the end of the day because even on a chain where we are expected to experience basically a ton of censorship moving to proof of stake as it sits right now on proof of work it is pretty impossible for anybody to sanction just a service or a protocol and you do end up in a position where I just say, as I have always said, Bitcoin is inevitable. It's just going to cause a lot of weirdness along the way and probably some strife too, right? We end up in this position of potentially entering something that I would refer to as a digital dark age. Should a person lose access to apps even if they can't actively accept a Tornado Cash transfer, what does it even mean to use Tornado Cash? This is where things get interesting on a protocol level. Recall that the Ethereum network, like other blockchains, relies on a community of miners or validators in the upcoming proof of stake system to assemble blocks and issue them out to the network. When you initiate a transaction on Ethereum as a user, it is added to the mempool, a big pile of transactions that have yet to be confirmed. Validators and miners assemble the blocks by selecting transactions from the mempool and placing them in some order. They then propose those blocks to the broader network so they may be confirmed by others and added to the chain. Now let's look back at Tornado Cash situation. If a validator adds a Tornado Cash transaction to a block, would they be running afoul of sanctions? While unlikely, the answer to this question isn't so clear. This has left room for speculation as to whether the Ethereum network is at its very core at risk of censorship. It also kicked off a conversation on Twitter around how Ethereum community would respond should validators take it up upon themselves to lo no longer accept Tornado Cash transactions. Now, in the case of mining, what we could see, like we've seen before, is basically censorship at the mining pool level uh, surrounding sanctions. And <clears throat> that could be a problem except for the fact that you still have the ability to have a new mining pool spin up with a node that uh, allows them to go ahead and still process these transactions and in which case could actually end up being more profitable than any other mining pool. In the case of validators, the barrier to entry is extremely high and once again, the systems that they will be running on do basically have some sort of centralization tied to them. And these are the distinctions between proof of work and proof of stake that matter here. As we've discussed in past editions of this newsletter, centralization on Ethereum's upcoming proof of stake network is becoming increasingly difficult to ignore. Oh man, I'm glad they're pointing this out. Thus far, far, there's no evidence from these validators that they will indeed censor transactions. It's not even clear that governments would require them to do so. However, uh, in this tweet, it raises an important question around the influence that states could theoretically have over blockchain the more centralized its validator set is. John Charbonneau, a research analyst at Delphi Digital, explained to Coindesk that only one third of validators would need to collude with one another in order to pose a nuisance to the network. If this many validators decide they don't like Tornado Cash transactions, they could theoretically meddle with the network by halting the chain, at least temporarily. The validators would have even more sway over the network if they managed to amass 51% of the staked Ethereum. And should two-thirds of validators decide they want to completely censor certain transactions, Charbonneau, Charbonneau says there's not much that the rest of the network would be able to do in order to stop them short of starting a brand new blockchain. 
except for the fact in the case of mining, this completely goes away. Why does it completely go away? Once again, because you can set up your own node for free and mine to it, and nobody's gonna be able to censor that. In the situation with proof of stake, it's a lot easier for this to happen because not just one validator can come on and start validating those chains. Uh, this is interesting as crap. The sensors can wait. There hasn't been any indication as yet from validators or miners indicating that they've altered their act activity pursuant with the U.S. Treasury's tornado cash mandate. Moreover, it's not clear that validators would censor the on the chain, uh, even if required. Lido, the largest Ethereum staking pool, divides its stake among several different validators. If Lido's community decides sanctions bar them from processing Tornado Cash transactions, they need to get all of their validators on board to find or find new ones. Luke Youngblood, who founded the Polkadot-based Moonbeam protocol after previously helping to build Coinbase's Ethereum staking product, told Coindesk he thinks it's incredibly unlikely the validators will or the validators staked by Coinbase would ever censor transactions. For one thing, says Youngblood, all of Coinbase's staking infrastructure was set up outside the United States. Even if it wasn't, Youngblood thinks the company would sooner shut down its staking service than censor transactions. Charbonneau explained to Coindesk that there are additional layers of nuance around whether validators are proposing or building a block. Eventually, in order to tackle the so-called minor extractable value problem, MEV, Ethereum will separate the parties that build blocks from those who propose them on the wider network. While full, full proposer build, builder separation, PBS, seems like it may be a couple years out, an interim feature called MEV Boost, which is set to accompany the Ethereum merge in September, will allow validators to propose pre-built blocks from central relayers rather than build blocks themselves. And remember, we've already been seeing some pretty significant issues with MEV Boost uh, on the horizon. In messages with Coindesk, Delphi General Con uh, Counsel Gabriel Shapiro speculated that proposers and builders could possibly be viewed differently from a legal perspective. The legal conception of facilitation or aiding abetting can be very broad, Shapiro wrote in a message to Coindesk. Validators who do not propose a block containing a sanctioned transaction but nevertheless sign an attestation for that block as a part of the sequence of events leading to that block becoming finalized might be guilty of facilitating or aiding abetting the sanctioned transaction and thus might be violating sanctions laws or other laws as applicable. Youngblood thinks this whole debate around whether validators will censor transactions is silly. He says it's just good engagement farming to spread FUD about companies whether true or not. It gets a lot of likes and retweets he wrote in a message to Coindesk. Fud or not, the risk of protocol level censorship is being taken seriously on Twitter, where prominent crypto investor Eric Wall polled the Ethereum community on how it would respond to or should validators begin censoring transactions. <clears throat> so far, 61% of users have selected the option X. Consider the censorship an attack on Ethereum and burn their stake via social consensus. And this is crazy because at the end of the day, too, that means that you have 49% of users that say that they're fine with the censorship. This would mean forking to a brand new blockchain where the offending validator stake is eliminated or reduced. Among the majority in favor of punishing censors was Ethereum co-founder Vitalik Buterin tweeting simply, uh, for what it's worth, I voted X in your above poll. Oh, man. The following is an overview of the network activity on the beacon chain for more information. Yeah, anyways. I don't know, boys. I mean, at the end of the day, I do think that there is a significant risk of censorship being uh, implemented post merge. I think there is more of a risk there at the end of the day. You know, we'll have to sit back and wait and see how this all plays out with the merge on Ethereum in particular. This may, in fact, obviously cause some sort of uh, fork as well, which would be an interesting fork um, because it sounds like it would be a post uh, proof of stake fork, which could be extremely interesting. 
Thanks for checking out this clip from the Crypto Mining Show. You can check out the full episode here or more crypto content down here. Also, I'd like you to check out my locals page at sonofatech.locals.com where you can become a member for free or choose to be a $5 a month supporter that unlocks additional content.